Hello, hello everyone, and welcome back to Captain Patriotic. How's everybody doing on this fine Thanksgiving week? I hope you guys are out enjoying your time with your family, eating some good food, and what have you. Thank you for tuning into this episode this week. As you'll recall last time, we talked about the most decorated U.S. Marine Corps veteran of all time. For those of you that did not tune in to last week's video, that honor goes to none other than Colonel Chessy Poehler. Now, Colonel Poehler had a very impressive career in the Marines, which actually started in 1918 when he enlisted right at the end of World War I and lasted all the way through the mid-1950s, where he would see service in Haiti, Nicaragua, China, many numerous battles in the Pacific during World War II with the other Marine units, as well as during the Korean War of the early 1950s. Now, what made Colonel Polar, the most decorated Marine in U.S. history, was the fact that he was awarded not one, but five Navy Crosses. The Navy Cross is very special because that is considered the second highest military honor that any member of the Marine Corps or the U.S. Navy can receive. For bravery and valor in combat and today in recorded history he is the only US Marine to have five Navy crosses to his name it's second only to the Congressional Medal of Honor and in addition to those five Navy crosses he also received an Army Distinguished Service Cross the Army's equivalent to the Navy Cross during Korea. That is really impressive, guys. Having six service crosses to your name, that is no small feat whatsoever. And that's not including the other numerous awards and medals that he has to his name. Needless to say, even though Colonel Polar is not a Medal of Honor recipient, he more than deserves the title of the most decorated combat marine in U.S. history. So, in light of the Marine Corps, I want to shift our focus back to our most decorated individual series for World War I. Well, and where today I have the honor and privilege of talking about the most decorated Marine Corps veteran from the First World War. And guys, that honor goes to none other than Private John Joseph Kelly. That's right, you guys. A Marine Corps private holds the title of the most decorated U.S. Marine during World War I, and for very good reason, too. And I'm just going to throw this out there. The reason that he tops this list is because he is in an elite group in and of itself. He is only one of four U.S. Marines during World War I to receive two Medals of Honor. That's right. He's only one of four individuals to have two Medals of Honor to his name for World War I. In fact, here is the list of him and the other three Marine Corps Medal of Honor recipients who are double recipients for World War I. One of these individuals, John H. Pruitt, in actually earned his two Medals of Honor during the same battle that Private Kelly earned his. The main difference is John Pruitt's was awarded posthumously because he was killed in battle. And fun fact for you guys, John H. Pruitt is actually a native of Arkansas, my home state. Go Arkansas. Well, anyway, back to Private Kelly, 
Our story begins on June 24th, 1898, whenever John Kelly was born in Chicago, Illinois. It was a pretty good upbringing around the turn of the century. You know, there wasn't a whole lot going on. You know, it was a really, really laid back and really good childhood. And just like Chessie Poehler, Kelly really, really wanted to serve his country. And he looked to other veterans from the Civil War, the Indian Wars, the Spanish-American War, the Philippine War. And he was fascinated by all of these stories from these older veterans to where he made a vow to himself whenever he became older, he would join the military and serve in the same capacity that those memorable vets told him about. In fact, he got his wish right after World War I started for the United States in April of 1917, whenever the U.S. declared war on Germany. It where John Kelly would enlist as a private with the Marine Corps on May 15, 1917, in Port Royal, South Carolina. Fast forward a few months, on September 5, 1917, he joined the 7th Company, 6th Marine Regiment at Quantico, Virginia, and on September 12th, he was transferred to the 78th Rifle Company. On January 19th, 1918, his regiment then embarked from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on the USS Anderson and arrived at St. Nazar, France on February 5th, 1918. So once Private Kelly and the other Marines arrived in France, they went through some rigorous training to get them ready to fight on the front lines of the Western Front. They were trained in anywhere from weapons handling to how to handle poison gas, because we know how common that was during World War I, as well as other hand-to-hand -hand combat tactics that would be used against them in those bloody trenches. Now, they did this for a couple of months just to get the Marines and other American soldiers ready to go into battle. But once their training was completed, Private Kelly and the other Marines in his unit participated in engagements such as the Battle at Chateau Thierry, the Battle of St. Miel, the Battle of Blanc Mont, as well as the famous and last offense of the war, the Moose Argonne Offensive. Now, before he really, really proved himself to be a valuable Marine, and whenever, before he became a double Medal of Honor recipient, he earned four silver stars for valor in combat. I know I've talked about it before, but the Silver Star is a pretty big deal in the U.S. military, even to this day. The Silver Star basically serves as the third highest military honor that anyone in any service branch could receive for bravery in combat, just behind the service crosses like I talked about earlier and the Medal of Honor. That's still a pretty big deal, and to earn four of those, man, that's really, really saying something about the sky. In fact, Private Kelly earned his first Silver Star during the Battle of Chateau Fury, where his citation for his first Silver Star reads, By direction of the President, under the provisions of the Act of Congress approved July 9th, 1918, Private John Joseph Kelly, United States Marine Corps, is cited by the Commanding General, 2nd Division, American Expeditionary Forces, for gallantry in action, and a silver star may be placed upon the ribbon of the victory medals awarded him. Private Kelly distinguished himself while serving with the 78th Company 
6th Marine Regiment, 2nd Division, American Expeditionary Forces at Chateau Thierry, France, from June 6th until July 10th, 1918. Now, before we go further to talk about his impressive record, I just wanted to reiterate to you guys that unlike World War II, where you had entirely separate army as well as entirely separate Marine Corps units in different theaters of the war, like in the Pacific versus the European theater of World War II, during World War I, the Army and the Marine Corps all served in the same theater of operations, meaning Europe. And because the U.S. Army was the biggest service branch of the U.S. military at that time, the Marines were kind of like an umbrella under the U.S. Army, in this case, the 2nd Army Division. And it was very common at that time for Marines, specifically infantry Marines like Private Kelly, to be awarded both Army as well as Navy medals for sometimes the same action. It was very, very common, I should say, to earn medals from the Army and the Navy during World War I, especially if you were a U.S. Marine like he was. And that goes for anything like people receiving both a Navy Cross and a Distinguished Service Cross from the Army, Silver Stars, which at that time was considered an Army Medal, and so on and so forth. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that confusion out the door for you guys so that this would make a little bit more sense. Anyway, after Private Kelly receives his first Silver Star for the Battle of Chateau Fury, he would continue to distinguish himself as a Marine on the front lines. I mean, even though he was a lowly private and not some sergeant or captain or gunnery sergeant, whatever rank in the Marines, he was still a pretty ruthless young man, to say the very least. In fact, he would go on to earn his second Silver Star on September 15, 1918, and this time it was during the famous St. Miel Battle of September 1918, and his citation reads, Private John Joseph Kelly, United States Marine Corps, is cited by the Commanding General, American Expeditionary Forces, for gallantry in action, and a silver star may be placed upon the ribbon of the victory medals awarded to him. Private Kelly distinguished himself by gallantry in action while serving with the 78th Company, 6th Marine Regiment, 2nd Division, American Expeditionary Forces, in action near, and sorry for my mispronunciation, Thio Court, France, on September 15, 1918, in aiding the capture of an enemy machine gun nest and the capture of four prisoners. That's pretty impressive that, one, he helped to take down a machine gun nest, but then he also helped to capture four German prisoners. That's really impressive. But he wasn't done yet either. In fact, he would earn two more silver stars for his actions during the Battle of St. Miel. Three silver stars for the same battle during World War I. That's pretty dang impressive. Private Kelly's third and fourth silver star citations read, By direction of the President, other provisions of the Act of Congress approved July 9, 1918, Private John Joseph Kelly, United States Marine Corps, is cited by the Commanding General, 2nd Division American Expeditionary Forces, for gallantry in action, and two silver stars may be placed upon the ribbon of the victory medals awarded him. Private Kelly distinguished himself while serving with the 78th Company, 6th Marine Regiment, 2nd Division, American Expeditionary Forces at St. Miel, France. 
On two separate occasions between September 12th and September 16th, 1918, by the time he has served in France for a mere seven, eight months, he's already a badass decorated Marine at this point, and he isn't an officer either. He's a Marine grunt on the ground, kicking ass and taking names, just like any Marine was doing then and any Marine that is doing nowadays. And you think four silver stars would be enough for him? No, 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 no. Private Kelly was a young kid at that point. He, he was bloodthirsty. He was looking for action. And he was action against the enemy. Now, this is all leading up to perhaps the greatest achievement in his military career with the Marines. And that battle where he greatly distinguishes himself in combat is none other than the battle at Blanc Mont, which lasted from October 3rd through 27th, 1918. It's kind of hard to see, but of course, the battle itself took place in northern France, just north, not too far north actually, from where other American and Allied forces were fighting during the Moose-Argonne Offensive. It was on October 3rd, 1918, during this Battle of Blanc Mont, that Private Kelly would become a two-time Medal of Honor recipient for a very bold action that he took on that first day of battle. And there's a lot of speculation of how this young man actually accomplished what he did, but apparently there was a lot of eyewitness accounts that actually witnessed him do this for his men, for his comrades, for anybody on that side during the battle. And according to a lot of people, in the desperate fight at Blancmont Ridge, Private Kelly ran 100 yards in advance of the front line and attacked an enemy machine gun nest. And it was for this action that he was awarded both the U.S. Army as well as the U.S. Navy Medals of Honor. His citation for both the Army and the Navy Medal of Honor read as follows. His Army Medal of Honor citation reads, Private Kelly ran through our own barrage 100 yards in advance of the front line and attacked an enemy machine gun nest, killing the gunner with a grenade, shooting another member of the crew with his pistol, and returning through the barrage with eight prisoners. Now, his Navy Medal of Honor citation goes into a lot more detail because, as we all know, the Marines are technically an umbrella branch of the Navy. That one's actually more impressive. And his Navy Medal of Honor citation reads, For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity above and beyond the Call of Duty in action with the enemy at Blanc Mont Ridge, France, October 3rd, 1918, Private Kelly ran through our own barrage 100 yards in advance of the front line and attacked an enemy machine gun nest, killing the gunner with a grenade and shooting another member of the crew with his pistol and returned through the barrage of gunfire with eight German prisoners. That's pretty impressive, y'all. And at the time he became a double Medal of Honor recipient, I want to say he was the youngest person at that time to ever receive the Medal of Honor twice. He was only...
So after he becomes the double Medal of Honor recipient from the Battle of Blanc Mont in October of 1918, him and the 6th Regiment, Marine Regiment, they would participate in the Moose-Argonne Offensive which lasted until the end of the war on November 11th, 1918. Thankfully, he was not harmed or killed or anything through all this chaotic warfare, thank goodness. So, after the guns were silenced on November 11th, 1918, Private Kelly, among other American expeditionary forces, he participated in the March to the Rhine River and the occupation of the Koblenex bridgehead in Germany from November 17th until December 12th, 1918. After his tenure with the occupation army, Private Kelly was honorably discharged with the character of Excellent at the Marine Barracks located at Guanaco, Virginia. So guys, that's really, really impressive, especially for having such a short career in the Marines as it was. I mean, he was very, very, very impressive. I mean, for a little kid among other ranks in the Marine Corps, he was pretty well decorated at that time. Not only for being one of only four Marines to receive two Medals of Honor during World War I, but also to have four silver stars to your name, among other decorations, that's pretty dang impressive. That is really, really, really cool. In addition to his Army and Navy Medals of Honor, as well as the four silver stars that he earned in other battles prior to Blanc Mont, he also was awarded two Purple Hearts for injuries that he received during the war, the Marine Corps Good Conduct Medal, as well as the World War I Victory Medal with five bronze battle stars to credit his participation in the Essene the Essene Marne, St. Miel, Moose Argonne, and the Defense Sector Battle Clasp. And that's all for American decorations. His foreign decorations include the French Medelli Military, the French Croix de Guerre with Bronze Palm and Bronze Star, the Italian Croce al Merito de Guerra, and the Montegrin Medal for Military Bravery. He lived a pretty quiet life after World War I. In fact, when he was discharged from the Marines in 1919, he was physically disabled a little bit from the injuries he sustained on the battlefield. But that didn't stop him from having a prosperous and good life after the military. No, he had a great life. a brilliant but quaint story about an underrated Marine, just a patriotic guy wanting to serve his country and do good for others. To think, at that time, to willingly enlist in perhaps the hardest and most badass military branch that the U.S. offers, that took a lot of guts in itself to enlist in the Marine Corps, even as early as World War I, because there was a lot of new technology and machine guns, mustard gas. It was a pretty dangerous branch to be in altogether. And I guess that's true even to this day, why not a lot of people enlist in the Marines. But that meant something to John Kelly. He really, really wanted to leave his mark on the world, and I really think that he did a wonderful job of doing this in such a short tenure with the Marines. 
That's really impressive to have two medals of honor to your name among other decorations. That's pretty dang impressive, you guys. And thank you guys so much for tuning in this week. This concludes our most decorated veteran series for World War I, but stick around in the near future for the most decorated World War II veterans. I'm going to take a little bit of time off this week to spend it with the family, celebrating Thanksgiving and eating good food and catching up with everybody. I hope you all have a wonderful time with your families this week. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And while you're at it, please go check out some more of my old videos. I would really appreciate all the support, everybody. Uh, thank you all for tuning in, and have a wonderful rest of your day.